But too many of us today, it's sad that they, we send that word, I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to take up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority yes. to walk all over thee. God has given you and I the authority. Amen. The moment you, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but the moment you and I said yes to Jesus Christ, amen, you are a child of God. You have amen. a true new identity. Yes. Yes. Amen. The old man has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about is our true identity by all by faith. Paul said it in Romans 8, 1 and 2 and 3, which I'm going to talk about. He said, there is therefore now. Now, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Oh, yeah. What would it be like today if you were on trial? And the judge gave, was going to give the final sentence. And you stood before the judge. And the judge looked at you square in the eye and said, not guilty. Yeah. Set him free. There you go. Amen. That's exactly what happened. Yes. Amen. The day you stood before the Lord yeah. and said, Lord, amen. I am a sinner. I need you. Forgive me of all my sins. And he looked down upon you and I and said, you're not guilty. You are set. Come on, church. You are set free. Amen. Sister Colleen, that by who you was you talked to, I don't need to know, don't care. But who you were praying for, that individual. Yes. By the moment they said yes, whatever the situation was, they were not guilty no more. Come on now. They were set free. Set free. The fact is that the whole human world race is on death row today. Come on now. Justly condemned for repeatedly breaking God's holy law. Come on now. Without Jesus, Without Jesus. we would have no hope at all, church. No. But thank God, but thank God, He has declared us not guilty and has offered us freedom from sin and power to do His will. Galatians 5 and 16 says, This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thus the secret of victory over sin is found not in the attempted obedience to a law that has been obligated, but is in sub subjection to a divine person, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Who at the moment the sinner places his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ takes up his permanent residence in his being yes. for the purpose of ministry to his spiritual uh -huh. needs. Yes. Amen. The moment you said yes to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost came into your life. Yes. Amen. And He starts ministering to you yes. to help you along this way. I'm glad I got a helper. Yes. Amen. I'm glad this morning I'm a friend of God. Amen, church. Amen. I'm talking about it. I'm trying to help you this morning that your true identity is in Christ all by faith. Yes. Praise God. So no condemnation awaits us. Come on, now. Come on church. The devil can say all he wants. Come on. Yes. Amen. But you are you've got a true identity. Your name may be still Brother Dale, but amen, you're a Brother Dale in Christ's eyes, a child of the King of Kings. Come on, church. Amen. He said in verse 2, he said, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. The believer's victory, the believer's great victory of Jesus Christ cannot function in the life of the believer as intended if the believer is frustrating by that law by avoiding
right? Obeying the same time the law of sin. Yeah. It is like pouring water into a tank made for gasoline and expecting the engine to continue to run. Come on. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is so powerful. So powerful, in fact, that there has never been a single person in history that has come to Jesus irrespective of their past and how dirty and how bad it is, but that Jesus took them, amen, and changed them and made them free from the terrible law of sin and death. I have a new identity today, and it's by Jesus Christ, by my faith put in Him. It doesn't matter what you've done. Many Christians, let me help you, you out there this morning, many Christians struggle, struggle to get a hold of what it means to be a child of God. And to really see ourselves the way He sees us. Beginning to walk with Christ can be a difficult transition. When we have spent years only hearing who we are from the world or from others. Huh? Come on, don't raise your hand. I'm sure there's probably been people that tell you, you ain't going to make it. Huh? You're not going to make it. You can just keep right on going to church. You ain't going to make it. But you know what? They keep right on saying all they want. I know I'm going to make it. I read the end of the story. Come on, church. Amen. I'm a child of the King of Kings. And one day I'm going to be with Him. This is so important. Because if we don't truly understand our identity in Christ, we will be swayed and discouraged by the lies of the enemy. We will be more prone to believe we aren't good enough or strong enough or worthy of love. He said, for we are set free from what? The law of sin and death. He said, for what the law could not do. <laughs> the law couldn't do it. That it was weak through the flesh. Oh, that's telling us we can't do anything through the flesh. The flesh is weak. Come on, church. But God sending His own Son in the likeness of a sinful flesh. For sin condemned, amen, sin in the flesh. We are free this morning by what Jesus did. He set me free, Brother Tim. He set me free. Amen. By accepting Him. Listen to me out there. All you got to do is say yes to Jesus. And you will be set free. Amen. You don't have to go through, through a big ritual. It's all by faith and believing in Jesus Christ. We are set free today. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hello. All right. I'm going to give you some scriptures to back up what I'm preaching this morning on, on my true identity. You want to turn with me or if you'll write them down, go back and read them. That's all right with me. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. It says, for as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with what? With the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. This verse shows us that we are redeemed. Yes. Come on, church. Our souls have been bought and paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We have been purchased at the highest price. Amen. Come on, church. I hope you see how adored and worthy of this God says that you are a prince. Oh, I didn't know what you were going to say. Amen, but I got it in my nose. He called me a friend. Yeah. Amen. He redeemed me by his precious blood. Yeah. He took, come on, church. Somebody got to be shouting yeah. here. You know I got a true identity this morning. Yeah. And it's all because of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What he 
intend for you, you've been redeemed. Amen. But with the pressures, for as much as you know you were not redeemed with comfortable things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, amen, I am free this morning. Here, this verse shows us that God sent something so much more valuable than the most expensive, most highly valued items on this earth, which was silver and gold. This verse called gold and silver perishable. Yeah. Perishable in comparison to the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Church, listen to me this morning. Your redemption is a free gift. Your redemption is a free gift. And it has been paid. And it has paid your bill in full. Oh, come on. I owe, I have, I owe nothing. Amen. I don't always sing that song. I owe you, Lord. Amen. Why? Because he paid the price for me, Sister Linda. Amen. His, his blood on the cross. I didn't shed no blood upon the cross. But that blood that he shed, Brother Dale, was for you and I this morning. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Come on. I'm trying to help you this morning. Redemption is not something you have to work for or earn. Yeah. You don't have to be a good, you don't have to be good enough for this gift. Come on. You simply need to receive it and believe it. And it's all by faith. You are redeemed. Amen. If you're redeemed this morning, you've got a true identity this morning. I didn't have to work for it. I don't have to work for it. He did the price. He did the work for you and I. It's all by faith. Trust him in him. That's right. Trust in him. Trust in him. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. Now, go to 1 John. 1 John 1 and 9. I'm giving you some scriptures to help you to realize, amen, that you are, you have a new identity. 1 John 1 and 3 says, if we confess our sins, who is? He is. To do what? Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Huh? There is such incredible promise in this verse. No matter, no matter what we've done. Oh, listen to me out there. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter what mistakes we've made. Come on, anybody listening here this morning? I want everybody's attention. He, Jesus Christ, God Almighty, yeah. is faithful. Yes, he is. Amen. Yeah. To forgive us if we confess. Yes. Oh, come on. If we confess our sins. Our sins. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Come on, listen to me. Well, he's a God. He loves me. Yes, he does love me. But the Bible says if I confess with my mouth, Yes, come, on. come on. i got to do the confessing. Yes. Amen. Well, yeah, he's going to forgive me. Everybody's going to go to heaven. No, they're not. No. Everybody's going to go to heaven. But not everybody's going to stay. Not everybody's going to stay. Come on, church. we got to do our part. He said, if we confess our sin, he then is faithful and just to forgive us of our what? Sins. Then to do what? And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. The moment Sister Alfie, the moment you and I said yes to Jesus, amen, we confessed our sin, said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need yes. you. He was faithful. And he cleansed me. And he gave me a different identity. Yeah. Come on, church. Amen. you got to know this. You're a child of the king of kings this morning. We, we do not have to be defined or bound by our past mistakes. Amen. If we will accept our redemption and confess our mistakes, we will be cleansed. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I have I have made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I don't know about you, but I many years I was raised in a good Christian home and 
I got out into the world and did my thing. Oh, I'm the only one. You guys are... No, you're not. You went out and did your thing, and some of you may be still doing your thing. But I spent believing that what I've done can never be forgiven. That I was not worthy of the love of the forgiveness that Christ offered. If that is you, know that there is such freedom to be found in giving your sins, giving your mistakes, and giving your blunders over to Christ. Yes. Are you hearing me? You do not have to walk in shame. You don't have to walk in bondage or sin anymore. Christ offers such full, yes. abundant life if we will accept the forgiveness He offers. Amen. And confess our hearts to Him and He is faithful to forgive us. In other words, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Huh? Not guilty. I've been, I, 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 I've been forgiven, Brother Bob. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. I got a true, my true identity is in Christ. Amen. What he did, it's all by faith. Okay. I confessed my sins one day. And I asked him to come into my heart. And I am forgiven. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. You all, all know this with my heart. I just said it there while ago. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, this is woman too. Huh? If you're in Christ, yes. he is or she is a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What do you mean new? Blessing's going to chase me down every day. Amen. I got blessed on the weekend. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's, but if I hadn't went out and bought this thing for $799 over $800, I couldn't have done it. But I ended up getting it for less than that. Because when I go in there, I'm not going to buy something that they want to sell me at their price. I'm going to dicker with them. And if they don't want to bring it down, I'm going to walk. Yeah. And I walked one time. And they said, no, 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 come back here. Come on, church. Why? Because God said, my blessings will chase you down. Uh -huh. Huh? I, I walked out of there, church, come on. Without hardly giving anything for it. God is good. Yeah. Amen. When we are in Christ, let me back up here. Once we have confessed our sins and asked Jesus to come into our hearts, we are redeemed. We are made new in Him. The old version of us has what? Passed away. A new version of us is being remade. Come on. He's working on me every day. He that had begun a good work. Yeah. Yeah. When we are in Christ, the old things of our lives have been washed away. Our old habits, our old sins, our old mistakes. We are now merely turning over a new leaf. We are new creations, living in, in vital union with Christ. Come on. We are not merely turning over a new leaf. We are beginning a new, new, new life under a new master. Yes. In other words, you are a new creation. Yes. Huh? Yes. We got get a new, any good creator, creator or creatures in here? Amen. Amen. Come on, church. You've been made new. Yes. Yes. Amen. That is your identity. If somebody says something to you, say, I'm a new person. Yeah. Amen. I may part my hair the same way right down the middle. If I had a comb, I wouldn't part with it. You yeah. get later. <laughs> huh? I may dress the same, wear the same clothes, but if I could see on the inside. Oh, what a change. Oh, what a change.
Amen. Jeremiah 31 and 3. I gotta hurry. Jeremiah 21 or 31 and 3. Jeremiah 31 and 3. The, Lord, the Bible says, And the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. This verse is from a book of prophecy. And like most Old Testament prophecies, the person is speaking to the nation of Israel. Yes. In Christ, we are now part of a God, God's chosen nation. Yes. God, in His goodness and, and, and His all-knowing and everything, knew that He, we would be reading these scriptures in the light of the salvation offered through Jesus that are absolutely applicable to us. This verse is very straightforward, but it is so important for us to get a hold of. You are so loved this morning. God has loved you with an everlasting, unchanging, unfailing love. No matter what you have done, He knows you and loves you so deeply. He is good and faithful and promised to rescue us. Just as Israel was in cap captivity for decades, we may be in a time of struggle for what feels like forever, but no, God has not left you. That's right. Nor is your pain without purpose. Yeah. You are loved this morning. Yeah. Why? Because I have a new identity in Christ. Right. First Peter. First Peter 2 and 9. First Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should know, show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I love this verse. Why? Because it reminds me of exactly exactly who God has called me to be in Christ. He has called us a royal priesthood. Yeah. A holy nation. Amen. A people for his own possession. We are his. Amen. 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 He has called me a friend of mine. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. But we are the ones that decide to step forward and live for Christ. Uh -huh. There are billions and billions of people that have been created and he doth knows us as a whole and individually. He has chosen you and I and your neighbor and the person who just cut you off in traffic. Huh? And told you you were number one. And part of his kingdom. He then chooses whether or not to accept his invitation. You are called out of darkness into the marvelous light of His love. Friend, you are chosen. Huh? Come on. I look around, I, I know you guys are all here this morning. You out there watching, you're peculiar. You are peculiar. Huh? Somebody tells you you're peculiar, go, thank you. Thank you. Then you know my identity. Yeah. Huh? Come on, church. Yeah. You are peculiar. You are chosen. Amen. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. You are chosen this morning. Let me go on here. Got a few more. We're going to quit. Psalm 17. Psalm 17. 7 through 9, or 7 through 8. Psalms chapter 17. Show thy mar marvelous loving kindness, O thou that sayest by the right hand them which put their trust in thee. For those that rise up against them, keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. This psalm was written by King David when he was on the run for his life. From Saul. As he wrote this, he desperately believed he would die if God didn't intervene and save him. This verse is him pleading for 
the type of protection only God can offer. As a mama bird protects her young under her wings, so does God protect us. Oh, come on, church. This is the cherishing kind of love he has for us. We are the apple of his eye. Come on. Uh, there may be some of you out there the prune of his eye. You'll get that later. But we are the apple of his eye and the precious, we are precious <laughs> in his sight. Oh, come on, church. He welcomes us into the shadow of his wings. In other words, you are cherished. Huh? Well, that's my identity. I'm cherished this morning. Ephesians 2 and 10. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, Ephesians 2 and 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Those in Jesus Christ are created for a purpose, church. You, are, you were created for a purpose. For we are His workmanship. We are created for three reasons. Reason one, to be in relationship with God. Two, to glory for God in the way we live. And three, to spread the gospel to others. Yes. Come on. You've been, you are His workmanship. workmanship. We were made to do the good works of this life. God set, set this ahead of us and has given us all the tools we need to walk in them. So many Christians struggle to find their calling or their purpose. But it, it really is so much easier than we make it out to be. <laughs> love God and love people. Use your talents and interests to make a living and generous gift to others. So many of us are so scared, uh, scared to choose the wrong career or the wrong path because we might end up unhappy. Well, I know I should have done that. <coughs> but our happiness is not in what we should seek. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. <coughs> and he will provide for you. Each and every one of our lives here this morning have meaning. <clears throat> and no matter what specific task we are called to do, you are purposed. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 58 11. Isaiah 58 11. We got about three more, including this one. Two more after this. Isaiah 58, 11 says, And the Lord shall guide thee, what? Continually. And satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Where God calls us to go, He will guide us. Amen. What God has called us to do, He will equip us for. Yes, He will. This verse is the, is the beautiful written book of Isaiah. It reminds us of God's promise to satisfy our needs and keep us vibrant and growing like a well-watered garden. True satisfaction in, in this life comes from a relationship with what? With Jesus Christ. And following His will for our lives. We can take such comfort in knowing that we don't have to do it alone. Come on. He is with us always, guiding us and making us strong. You are guided and you are equipped. That's your identity. You don't have to do this. You can't. You, church, listen to me. You're not going to do this alone because if you try to do it by yourself, you're going to fail. If we allow God to lead us, we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, Come on. This will be a better year for all of us. Amen. Come on. If we allow him to do the leading. Philippians 4.13 says, 
Somebody give me this. Say it right now. I can do all things. It doesn't say part of things. Huh? My identity says I can do all things. Through Christ, which strengthens me. Come on, church. This verse was written by Paul while he was in prison for spreading the gospel. Often this verse is taken to mean we can do anything because Christ gives us strength and this is only partially true. <laughs> if you can do all things, let's see you climb up on this roof of this church here and see you jump off and see if you can fly. Yeah. And I'll be sitting there ready to call 911. Because yeah. you won't break a body, a part of your body. Amen. People take this scripture <laughs> out of context. And they use it for their own glory. Yeah. I can do all things. Well, go for it. Go for it. Great. This verse, when Paul was in prison, often this verse is taken out of context because Christ gives us strength. Paul wrote this part of his letter to encourage the Philippians to endure suffering and persecution. And to press on in spreading the good news, even in the midst of great opposition. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, but we must first seek to do all things within His will. Amen. It does not mean we can do whatever we want. But it does mean we will be strengthened to endure through Christ as He has called us. In other words, you are strengthened and capable of doing it. And it's all because of Jesus. And it's all because I have a true identity. And it's in Christ, and it's all by faith. That one allows you and I to be able to do things. Come on, church. And it's all by faith in Jesus Christ. Last one. Galatians 4 and 7. Galatians 4 and 7 says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Once we give our lives to Christ, <clears throat> and we accept the free gift of redemption, we become a child of God. Yes, amen. <clears throat> we are adopted into his kingdom and become heirs to heaven. We are no longer slaves to the sin that bound us. And we can choose to walk in complete freedom. For some, this happens very quickly. For others, it takes a long time and a lot of work to fully heal from, their, from our past. No matter how long the healing takes, we have the power in Christ to break free from what used to be to hold us down. We are no longer slaves to sin. Fear, depression, anxiety, temptations, or feelings. You can overcome because you are a child of God. Amen. Listen to me. There's people going to know what you did in the past. And there's going to be people that will bring up your past. But you look at those people in the eyes, say, I love you, but I have no past. Come on. They're under the blood. Huh? What did we just read? Somebody read it for me. Romans 8 and 1. Brother Bob, get it to you real quick. Romans 8 and 1. Well, what, what did we just read? Huh? Read it for me, brother. He's giving it. There is therefore now no condemnation. No, what, 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 now? Now. Now. No Come on. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the flesh. See, they can say, well, you got a past. Say, no. There's no condemnation to me. Here in a couple weeks, you're going to give your testimony, right? Or is it February? February, okay. Well, a few weeks. A few weeks. A few weeks. Sister Shannon's going to give her testimony about what God has brought her out of us for, for five years now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people remember what she did. Uh -huh. 
The world will remember what she did. I'll even say that the court will remember what she did. But God has no record. Amen. There's no condemnation. Amen. Come on, church. Come on. She's got a true identity. Yes. Amen. Amen. The world may remember. People will remember. Your family will remember. Yeah. But there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ. You're not guilty no more. Come on, you're free. That is your true identity. I'm a child of the King. I belong to Him. And it's all by faith. It's nothing that you and I did. I confessed my sins. Said, Lord, I'm a sinner. He knows you are. Come on. And by confessing my sins to him, say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. That's all you got to do. Forgive me. And he forgives. He is faithful. Faithful. Then you turn from that. Come on. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, and turn, and turn from their wicked ways, then, then we got to do some things. When we've done those, guess what? He's going to heal our land. Yes. He's going to heal you, church. Amen. I have no past. I said I have no past. I have a true identity, and that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. You can't overcome. Oh, church. No matter how long the healing takes, we have the power in Christ to break free from what used to hold us down. Huh? He'll give you the strength. I can do all things through Christ. Jesus who strengthens me. We are no longer slaves. Huh? You're no longer a slave this morning. Huh? But you are a child of the King of Kings. I've got a true identity this morning. Huh? There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Nobody can take your name out but you. Huh? If you walk away from God, turn away from God. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. It, 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 your uh, name is uh, taken out of the book of life. Yes. Our true identity. I gave you scripture to back up. There's so many more I could have went through. So many more. And I gave you some scripture this morning to help you to know what your true identity is. And it's all by faith this morning. Yeah. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Because the, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. But I could have preached a long time on that verse right there. Jesus has made me free. Yes. Yeah. Huh? The law couldn't do it. The law, even the, 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 the goats, Brother Bob brought it out there. I think there was a, a favorite during his preaching on one uh, last uh, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve. Maybe he saw, said it for Thursday night, I'm not sure. What the goats could not do, it only covered us. But the blood of Jesus Christ gets down inside. And it washes us clean. I'm clean today. Do I still have my mistakes? Do I still have faults? But God don't look at my faults. He doesn't look at my mistakes. He sees if the blood of Jesus is applied to my life. But the Holy Spirit inside of us is helping us. Yes. He's, he's telling you when you do something, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> but our flesh sometimes. Yeah. Well, they won't miss me this morning at church. I'll just sleep. Flesh is saying sleep. The Holy Spirit is saying, get your butt out of bed yeah. and get dressed and get to church where you go. Yeah. Huh? Come on. 
I love you this morning, but I want you to know your true identity in Christ. You belong to Him. You don't belong to Pastor Gerald. You don't belong to Victory in the Cross Ministries. Come on. Amen. You belong to Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. You got a true identity this morning. Yes. That it's all because of what Jesus did on the cross. If it wasn't for Him, where would we be this morning? Where would we be this morning? I would be lost. I don't know about you, but I will be lost. Bow your heads this morning. Kind Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, I have given what I felt that you've given us. Lord, I know there's many, 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 many more scriptures that maybe someday I'll bring out again if you want us to do. But I want those watching, those here this morning, to understand their true identity. And it's in Christ. We've been bought with a price. We have no condemnation. No condemnation <coughs> awaits us. We are set free from the law of sin and death. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. We are a new creation. We are loved. We are chosen. We are cherished. We have a purpose. We are, we, you are purposed. And the Holy Spirit will guide us and He will equip us. And you are strengthened and you are capable of doing what you want us to do. Lord, that's my identity. And Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're going to do. Musicians, singers, make your way back, please. I know, dear God, that you've done a great work in this coming year for this church. We need to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to the world. For souls die. We may not reach them all, dear Lord, but let us reach as many as possible. Let us get to those that are lost, those that need help. Send somebody. Send somebody in the town. Lord, that'll speak the truth to you. Lord, we need to praise you the Lord. We love you this morning. As we sing this old chorus, you find your place in prayer inside of you. Find before the Lord. Humble yourself before Him. And if there's anything in your life that needs to be taken care of, ask God to begin with you. Because you are redeemed this morning by the precious blood. Oh, I'm redeemed.
Do we have any redeemed people in here this morning? New creators this morning, new creation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You've been bought with a price. Amen. You do not own yourself. Amen. It's because of what Jesus did at the cross. Amen. Amen. I pray you got something out of that this morning. Amen. Your true identity. If somebody ask you who you are, just tell them I'm redeemed. I've been bought with a price. Amen. Amen. It's Jesus Christ did it all for you and I. We love you this morning.